I'm here with Steve Hendrick, and you are uh, you have your Doctor of Veterinary Medicine, and you're an Associate Professor at the U of S now. Yeah. Um, let's just talk a little bit about uh, respiratory disorders. If I have some kind of respiratory distress, what do I do? Okay. Well, I guess the the first thing I, I, I would do is go out. You're going to have a look at the cattle. Um, generally, starting by looking over the fence, right? Not to work them up. Um, cattle are prey animals, meaning that other animals prey upon them, and so they are very subtle in their disease symptoms, okay? Uh, typically when they're sick, that's not a good thing. You don't want your herd mates and you don't want predators to realize that, okay? So, so often the signs that we're looking for in the cattle is very subtle, and uh, so if you're seeing an animal, like you say, described your calf that's very sick, uh, I would say that's a cause for concern because it's probably very sick. It, in fact, and no offense, but you, you may have even missed it for a day or two because the signs can be that subtle. Are there any kind of behavioral signs? Yeah, definitely. Um, what we notice with sick animals is that their flight zone becomes incredibly reduced. The other interesting thing is when, when you see an animal that you think might have pneumonia, we, we talk about taking them for a stress walk and we make them, um, we get into their flight zone and actually make them walk. And, and what we expect to see is once they get out and they should be, you know, comfortable again, they'll usually stop and turn around and have a look at you. And if they don't do that, we should be con really concerned that those animals are probably quite sick. They're just doing their best to get away. They don't want you to notice that they're sick or off. Um, one thing to realize with pneumonia and cattle or bovine respiratory disease, there's many different causes to it. Okay, and so I guess first off, I think what I would do, like I said, is, is have a look at your pen. Is that the only one that's sick? If you've got one that's obviously sick, you can usually pick them out outside of the pen. What you're looking for is typically animals with their head down that are depressed. Often droopy ears is something else producers will notice. So we're, we're typically looking at the animals from the shoulders forward, okay? Uh, we do have some evidence of steers with snotty noses, but but to be honest, that's not the thing to look for. Um, animals that are having obvious, you know, uh, stress trying to breathe, um, those are, to, you know, something to be worried about. Um, and you want to be extra careful working with them that you don't stress them out too much uh, that they'll collapse on the way to the chute to get treated, okay? Um, How do we go about diagnosing different respiratory illnesses? Well, I, I think the big thing to realize, so if you were dealing with feedlot cattle or recently weaned cattle, so there's lots of stressors. And so typically we're dealing with that shipping fever pneumonia very early in the feeding period. And what you have to realize is it's a combination of viruses, bacteria that all come together with these other stressors and can create very different pictures of disease, okay? But like I say, often what we're looking for is that depressed calf because those are the ones that often need to be pulled and treated okay if you see a calf that's got its head extended and it's got saliva because it can't swallow it's too busy trying to breathe I would say one of those are typically a viral pneumonia but we will often pull and treat those just for safety's sake to make sure we're not missing something bacterial. So whether it's important to try and distinguish all the causes, I don't think it necessarily is. Now, there's probably one instance that I could go into uh, later in the feeding period that we would try to identify or figure out what it, what it is. Um, and that's called atypical interstitial pneumonia. And we see it most commonly in fat heifers. Um, and what happens is they present just like I described with their head out, their neck extended rather, there's lots of saliva, they're really trying to get their breath. Farmers, if you're a cow-calf rancher and you saw one of these, you'd think of fog fever, okay? Cows going on to lush grass in August, September, even this time of year. Uh, if you've still got some lush grass around that you turn the cows onto, you can see the same type of pneumonia appear. 
the worst thing to do is stress these animals out. They will collapse on you. In the cow's case, we usually try to move them back onto poor grass. In the feedlot, we will try and take them to and put them on a different ration, you know, or even give them some steroids to, to try and minimize the inflammation in the lungs. But, um, or in, in if they're close to slaughter, you might even rail them just to get a salvage value out of those animals. So, What's causing that then? Um, it's a chemical called uh, 3-methylindole. The important thing to realize there's chemicals through the diet that get converted in their liver and, and then subsequently go to, the, to their lungs and are toxic uh, to the lining of the lungs, okay? Causes lots of inflammation and, and basically almost makes them drown to death internally. And so uh, when we cut them open on post-mortem, because I won't lie, that happens to a great percentage of them, we'll see that moistness in the lungs. They're very heavy. Um, and like I say, that the presentation of a heifer uh, is quite common, N not exclusive to heifers, but, but there's hormonal influences that come into play, that darn old progesterone that, that will uh, uh, lead to that pneumonia as well, so, or predispose them. So if we do have a sick animal with tipping fever or, yeah. or a certain kind of pneumonia, we'll treat them with some kind of antibiotic? Often what happens um, is we will initially go through you know and, and the the animal health professionals working in the feedlot or as a cow calf producer you're going to go in you're going to identify which ones are sick and then we want you as quietly as possible to pull those animals take them to the chute and use that information of what you saw in those animals but also then to tempt them okay or take the rectal temperature um, once you do that, work with your veterinarian to have an established protocol for what temperature you use as your cutoff. I think it's not uncommon if you're using Fahrenheit to use 104 or 40 degrees Celsius as a cutoff and say anything hotter than that would be treated and you would then have a protocol of what antimicrobial or antibiotic to give to that animal. Oftentimes in Western Canada, it's still very, it's very common that we treat them and it's a long-acting formulation that goes subcutaneous and then these animals are returned home. Um, long gone are the days where we used to hold them in sick cattle pens. Unless they've gone to three or four treatments and they just aren't responding, they might be held back as a chronic animal and or, you know or if they've developed arthritis or a joint infection along with and so those can be you know some of the consequences of, of having pneumonia that you, you might have some of those chronic animals but we try to catch the animals early enough that, that we don't end up with that.